looking good so far. One thing I am going to do here is I'm going to knife this. Okay. Select the lines. Okay. Hit K for a knife. And I'm just going to. There we go. It gives me some extra vertices to adjust. Okay. Now let's take a look at the top here and see what we've got. Okay, a little bit of adjustment we're going to have to make, but it's starting to really come together. Especially if we look at it from this side, it's starting to look pretty good. Now, uh, right here, of course, where we've got our little folding anomaly here. That we, yeah, it's really, really starting to look tricked there. Okay, now, we're probably going to have to move all of these points around, but let's take a look here. Yeah, it's starting to look really good. This is the real slow part, and it will be the slow part in these tutorials where we just go through. Luckily, we're only having to do it on the this half of the car, not the whole thing. I've seen some modelers, for example, one in particular that modeled the whole hood and did it as one piece. That's kind of stupid. Well, I mean, it it, it is, but it isn't. Uh, one, the hood is a big flat piece of metal, and it's per totally symmetrical. It's like an airplane. Sometimes you can get away with that on big airplane pieces because, well, for example, just copying one piece and throwing it on the other side, which is sort of like mirroring, but not not totally. But uh, there's not a lot of difference from from one side of the hood to the other with respect of error that can be made because you you can pretty much just work straight across. Whereas you've got two pieces like fenders and quarter panels which are totally disconnected from each other. To try modeling those on the other side is really shooting in the dark. The mirror modifier, in my opinion, is always the best way to go. So let's go in here now and take a look at this and we're going to see what we can do to smooth this out. Now, as you can see, we've got these pieces here which are just really kind of all over the place. All right, and I'm gonna just adjust these a bit to try to encourage the flow of should I say, uh, whatever, anyway, okay, a little bit better, we've still got some problems here, and the problem I think is the, uh, this needs to be adjusted along the x-axis, so now I can't really see here, well, let's see if I can view it even from there, okay, this, this, yeah, I think those things need to come out a little bit. So, the best way I think to handle this might be in the top view. We may have to go to perspective view. I don't really particularly like modeling in the perspective view because you're working on three axis axes where here you're only really working on, on two. Well, hmm, let's see. Yeah, hold on. I need to pull that in just a bit. I tried to kind of split the difference here in these two without really. And also, parallel lines. See how the lines, if they're running parallel to each other, you've got some symmetry there. Whereas as you can see here, there is a little bit of a problem. Okay. Okay. Just pull these lines in a little bit to where they're more parallel. And to where you got a little bit nicer curve there. Alright? That might have solved some of our problem. Let's go back and take a look. 
Hmm? A little bit of a fold right there, but not that bad. Okay, let me go back and do a subsurf modifier on this. Okay. Issue there, and it's with one of these points, but we'll fix that. We just gotta work with it until it looks good. Issue is right here. Turn this off, and it's with these points. So, uh, let's go into perspective here and zoom in, and it's gonna give us a little bit of yeah, there we go. Gonna give us a little bit of. Uh, insight here into what what is exactly wrong as you can see we're dealing with a line that's not parallel right here so uh, I'm gonna get rid of my subsurf modifier yeah okay now I'm gonna move this down and move this over here as you can see this one here is way out it doesn't need to be out that far I can see that now and I'm gonna go back here take a look at this looks pretty good from that angle though. I don't know let's rotate here yeah, let's rotate out and around here and let's see what it looks like no I think the problem is just a height problem. As you can see, it's cutting in. You have to think in 3D, um, 3D in terms of where you want to be as opposed to what dimension the other points are in. And sometimes those points conflict quite a bit, and you you end up with some really bad crossover as far as uh, dimensional planes. What I can do here to adjust for this, if anything, um, we've already split this off, and hopefully, let's see if I can go into. I think I can, and if if worst comes to worst, I can just start deleting faces. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to create a lot of knife cuts and see if I can't even some of this out here. Now uh, I'm going to select the lines and I might have to end up deleting some polygons and redoing them. Okay. Okay. I'm going to see what it's going to do. Knife exact cut from here to here and didn't do anything. Hold on. If exact, just cut across from here to here and yep. I'm gonna have to. Oh, well, see, this is the problem. Um, let me see if I can do this. Um, let's go to Polygon. Okay, select this, this, and this, and delete them. Yes, race, faces. Get rid of it, then go to Lines. And because these, this is a completely different part, but the problem with the knife tool... Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Okay, the problem with the knife tool is that when it crosses a line, even though the part is not connected in the 3D world, it'll still try to make a slice on it because you're in the that sector of the polygon. So, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna... Might 
not work. Problem is, it's it's hitting to that line there. Okay, it is working. So I'm gonna make one more knife cut here along this line, and I'll just go in now and do polygon mode, and I will just delete all these faces and rejoin them. and then I'll go back to line mode because this as I said the wheel well it's in no way shape or form connected to these and uh, now see I've got a big fold right here but I'm going to try to move these around and get them to where I want them see, because see I have a very com very complex curve right here that I'm trying to deal with and I've made just enough points to represent it well. And now these points have to be moved out and in so as to make a smooth transition because you can see once we get a really nice bad paint job on this we're going to see that there's some problems. Okay. So another dead mosquito. All right. Now coming in here, what can I do here to adjust this? Let's see, I'm going to adjust here on the x-axis and I'm going to see it almost made a little worse. Hmm. Yeah, this is really maybe maybe my problem's back here <laughs> along this. I think it, yeah. Okay. I've I'm gonna have to adjust along these lines here. I can see that right now. Whew. Let's see the best way of doing that. Let's see. Would that be from the top view? Yes. Okay. So. Make it big. Trouble is, we're really pretty much right on it, with the exception of a few points. There's not a lot of deviancy. Now, when we get to the perspective view, and we might. What happened? 